I wanted to recreate a simple effect from the Behance app on iOS. I'm using React and a library called Frame Emotion. If you'd like a concise tutorial, take a look here. There's also a link in the description. This is a process video of me live coding the basic effect. I'll go through my thought process as I'm coding. You'll notice I came across a dead end. You'll encounter dead ends a lot when programming. I got there in the end, but things don't always work out how you'd expect. Sometimes you need to try a different approach. This is Coding with Seth. Let's get started. The first step was to import Frame in Motion. We're going to use the motion component from Frame in Motion. And I also need some content so we can fill up the page a bit. We're also setting a width to about 40 rem. I'm doing this just so we can have a similar experience to the mobile device. And we don't really need to show any other real content on the screen. I'm going through now to create the actions and this is going to house a few buttons. So I'm just playing around with the styles and making sure that it's fixed in place. This is going to stay in the same place the whole time. Just correcting the padding of the buttons to make it look a bit better. I'm also going to add a border radius to curve the buttons and curve the container around it as well. I'm going to add a button here just so it matches the Behance app. It's nice to have a few more elements to work with. This would be representative of a real action snap you might use. This is looking pretty good, so I'm going to start adding the animations. We start off with initial and animate. So these are the two values we need to start off with. If we don't set an initial value, then animate's not really going to do anything if our opacity starts at 1 and ends at 1. I'm having a look through the documentation to try and figure out if we can use use viewport scroll. I started off with this technique because I thought it might be the best way to go. But we actually don't want to animate the component based on the position of the scroll. This is one of the dead ends I was talking about. You can see I'm trying to get the, uh, the correct scroll behavior and I'm trying to see if there are any properties we can use to figure out if we're scrolling up or down. You know, so I figured out how to get it working, but again, this isn't the effect we were looking for. It fades in and out between zero and one, but zero is right at the top of the page and one is right at the bottom of the page. This has an undesired outcome. This is not really the animation we wanted. I decided to play around with the CSS again, just so we can get some horror effects. Although I won't show this in the tutorial, I just thought it would be nice to expand upon that. All right, this is the second attempt. We're going to go back to basics. We're starting off with initial zero, uh, initial opacity of zero. And we're also going to add this toggleable variable. Just testing that that works. You'll notice that this is what we go with in the final tutorial. I'm adding a scroll listener here. I want to know when the page scrolls up and when the page scrolls down. So we can just add a scroll listener and also remove the scroll listener in the use effect. I 
I move should show actions into the state. Now we can update it when we like. Again, I'm looking for a property that we can make use of here. None of these seem to do. So I end up going with scroll Y. Excellent. We have the value changing and it's logging to the console. Now all we need to do is have the last position and then see if the position, the current position is greater than the last position. If it is, it means that we're scrolling down. If it's less than that, it means we're scrolling up. Those are the only two states we need to worry about for the animation. I was playing around with the logic here, trying to figure out what was wrong. Stupidly, I chose use effect with an empty array. This means that it would only fire on mount. I decided to move actions out of the main app container. This is really because the whole app updates every time we scroll, and we don't want to be reloading the text every time and re-rendering that text. That's a pretty expensive operation. So what I'm doing is moving it to actions so that because actions is the only component that's updating, it will also be the only component that's re-rendering and not that massive amount of text that we put in the app container. I finally figured out the value wasn't updating, and that's why. So I update the use effect, and there we have it. That's the complete working code. There are definitely some optimizations we could make here, but for now, it's working. And for the tutorial, you'll notice that I update some of the bug fixes. We've got scroll in there when it should be scroll. Uh, that was just me playing around, trying to figure out if I could optimize it in any way. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to see the full tutorial, the link's in the description, and it'll be coming up on the screen right now. Please subscribe for more React animation videos. I'll keep them coming.